Hey guys, Rob Shuker out here with Three Storm Fitness. I look, before you turn this off, I know this is going to be a, a, I just know it's going to be a very long video. Um, so let me just make my first point first. What I'm going to be talking about today, you can t listen to it and then tune out if you want. Turn it off. It's cool. Um, but what I'm going to be talking about today is your strategy for going to the doctor's office. There should be strategy involved. Um, your health care is important. I don't need to tell you that your health is important, but it is. Some people need a reminder. I need a reminder myself sometimes. It's not something you just want to kind of pussyfoot around with. <laughs> I'm such a child. I can't say certain words without laughing. That was not meant to be dirty. What? I mean, what was? What am I talking about? All right, let me move on. Let me start with the with the main driver here. This will uh, this will let you know whether or not you uh, care. I have I took some notes. I don't normally take notes, but there's some things I wanted to say. Yeah, there's three pages here. They're little pages though, and I have big handwriting and ugly handwriting. All right, <clears throat> I'm just gonna start by saying, you viewer are responsible for your health. And furthermore, uh, the reality is that it's up to you to make sure, this is where people might get really upset, it's up to you to make sure that you get the best health care that your doctor can provide you, that your health care can provide you, and i got to be realistic, that you can afford. Not everybody can afford the best of everything. We know that. So let me start off. Hopefully you're staying around. If not, I hope you have a great day. Um, <clears throat> let me start off by just saying that, uh, I'm going to offend, uh, both sides here. I'm going to offend, uh, patients and I'm also going to offend doctors. I'm, I'm just sure of it. I, I'm not, it's not my intention. I, I, I love both sides. I have tremendous respect for doctors. I'm so glad we have them. And, uh, I also recognize that, uh, people do get screwed. The patients get screwed all the time. Uh, unnecessarily. It does happen. I do, however, think that there is a nice in-between and a way that you can kind of navigate these waters. And I'm just going to share with you what's been working for me. The kind of some of the ahas that I've experienced. I want to tell you about them. Okay, so uh, let me start off by saying I there was a time where I was extremely jaded. Uh, I've had a very negative view, very negatively biased toward uh, healthcare providers, doctors, I, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say I hated them. I still recognize, still kind of smart enough to recognize that, uh, you know, if I bust my head open, I'm going to need somebody to help me out. You know, those, those really uh, urgent situations or, you know, I have some rare disease and I just, there's no amount of Googling that's ever going to fix it for me. I need somebody who's a specialist. But, but for the most part, I kind of had this viewpoint really up until kind of not that long ago, maybe I'd say maybe two years ago, that I really kind of, I just didn't, I don't, I, I kind of figure I could just do it without them. And let me explain that. Uh, some of the experience, the reason I, I, I felt that way, like, first off, in college, I was playing uh, tackle football without pads, which is stupid. Uh, I didn't even like football. Like, I don't know what, what I was doing on the field. But I got uh, I got blindsided, and um, just anybody that's ever happened, I couldn't breathe. My ribs were hurting so bad. <clears throat> Plus, I used to uh, engage in some recreational behavior back then pretty chronically. <laughs> so it, every time I cough, it would absolutely kill me. And I finally went to the doctor and the doctor took some x-rays and he said, uh, well, it looks like you might have a broken rib, but well, ribs are kind of funny. We don't really know for sure if you do, but it looks like you might. And also there's not much you could do about it. Um, so here's what I'm going to tell you. If it still hurts in six weeks, it's broken. All right. Have a good day. Oh, and by the way, uh, even though this is urgent care, we're going to bill you as the emergency room. So have fun uh, being on the phone for two hours, straightening that crap out. Good luck with that rib. It's probably broken. <laughs> that was, little, I mean, he didn't say all that last part, but like, that's what happened. And now I've since learned that, yeah, ribs are, it's pretty, that's a tough one to diagnose. And it, but I didn't know that. You know, and I thought he was just being a dick. I thought he was being lazy. Um, another example was uh, I've always had these um, always had these terrible aches and pains, just all throughout my body, my elbows, uh, my my hips, my knees, my ankles, my feet, my neck. Everywhere has always hurt. 
I've always just, I kind of assumed I maybe had early arthritis or whatever. Um, uh, I had, uh, one, one problem I had always had was, uh, with back pain, right? Uh, thoracic region, right between my shoulder blades, especially real sharp pain, nasty pain. To the point where I had to like, I was on a couch pee after lifting my, my 13 pound daughter, uh, on the couch peeing in Gatorade bottles all weekend. It was awful. And I went to the doctor for it. I went to a couple doctors for it and they both said, maybe even three, all three, all of them said same thing. Basically, take it easy, take a bunch of ibuprofen. Oh, and this kind of crap just happens. Like, this is just, eh, it's just life. Like, not really much you could do about it. Just kind of, you know, don't do what hurts. Take a bunch of ibuprofen, NSAIDs, whatever. That's really it. That's all they gave me, all right? And that's all, and that's just for my back pain. I've been to several other doctors for many, 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 many other things. And kind of thing. You know, my, my, oh, my, my forearms are just killing me. I'm doing this, I'm doing this. They say, oh, well, don't just, if, if that's what's making it hurt, just stop doing it. <laughs> they just sort of sneak out of there. Like, that's all, oh, if, if, you know what causes it, so don't do it. No. Obviously, I'm getting a little hot. It's, it does bother me. It did bother me, and, and um, it drove me nuts. And it, it, it's like they just kind of quit on me. Um, uh, and, and then lastly, another example was, this is just a couple of years ago, I went to the doctor, and he didn't barely look at me. When he walked in, you know, whatever. Um, sat down with his, with my chart. Said, "Well, I notice you're uh, notice you're about 250 pounds. Um, you know, there's some uh, weight loss drugs that we I could prescribe for you." But like, that was the that was his opening line. I noticed you're 250 pounds. That's overweight. There are some weight loss drugs I can give you. I promise. I was like, "What?" Like, first of all. I have thick skin. I don't care. I know, I, if he's calling me fat, even if I, I wasn't at the time, I mean, I could, you know, I, I could dunk, you know, I'm not like a big fat 250. I'm the six, four. I, uh, could probably, I don't know. I'm not that amazing of an athlete, but i definitely don't need to like wrap the bat go into weight loss drugs. Like, and then he looks at me, I'm like, Hey man, are you, uh, like, really? Is that, I was kind of like baiting him. I want to see where else he went with that. And he's just like, oh, hey, you're in pretty good shape, huh? I'm like, well, I mean, I'm a personal trainer. Huh? <laughs> so anyways, that's just what's happened to me, okay? That's not a big deal. It's really not in the grand scheme of things. But it was enough to kind of sour my perspective, right? Um, now, I want to talk about their side a little bit. I want to give uh, this defense for doctors. And, and this is not, I don't want this to be an argument. I'm not taking sides here, but I kind of, I need to plant some context here from where I'm going because it is it is important. I don't know where you stand. Maybe hopefully you're a reasonable person. You see both sides now, like I think I now am, but I haven't always been, as I just told you. Um, so, where am I here? Yeah, their side. Okay, doctors. Doctors don't have a lot of time. They just don't. Um, what they do with it, there's some to definitely manage it a lot more effectively when it comes to patient direct patient care and whatever else that whatever else they do. Um, I I worked in the healthcare system for for several years in IT fixing computers, but I still work with doctors and and, and nurses and, and and everybody else that goes lab technicians, everybody else that goes in the, the play, but especially a lot of physicians. I used to work with physicians personally, directly, very regularly, and look they. I'm not trying to paint a sob story for them, but they, they, they don't have much time. They have like seven minutes, maybe 15 minutes, and maybe these stats are off, but it's somewhere in the ballpark, to, to, to look at you and fix all your freaking problems, or at least get you to shut up, all right? And again, I worked in IT. That'd be, I, I'm just trying to imagine if somebody, this is not an apples to apples comparison, but that sort of strengthens my argument here. If somebody put a computer in front of me and said, you have seven minutes or 15, shoot, two hours to figure out every freaking thing that's wrong with this thing and make it work, make it start working like better, like right now, there's no amount of training in the world that would allow me to do that. And that's a computer. All right. That's something that people made. This is a human being. Like there's a lot more going on there. There's a lot more that could cause this. I don't need to explain all that. It's we're very complicated beings. Okay. It, it is very, it's crazy to think that a doctor could be able to just let me let me say this. I don't want to go too far down this road. 
a lot of people's expectations is that doctors are magicians and they should just be able to, well, most of that guy's getting paid, sure, I should be able to, you know, that whole thing. Or even if you have a more reasonable approach to it, a lot of people just, they just don't know. Just like computer guys, like, you don't know how a computer works. You should be, this guy, this is what he does for a living. He should be able to fix every single computer problem that exists right now. And, you know, you know my plumber should be able to fix every plumbing problem. The guy mowing my lawn, you know, whatever. When you're ignorant about whatever the craft is, you you just don't you don't know you don't know what you don't know that whole thing. And doctors are a huge huge example of that. Okay, so we we sort of just see them as as these as these magicians, and that's just not the case. It's it's impossible. Life is not that simple. Um, so we can kind of change that perspective there. But that is they don't have a lot of time, and they see tons. They see dozens of, some doctors see dozens of patients a day. So as much as you'd like to think that you're special, and you are, and maybe your doctor really does actually like you, um, it, it, the fact of the matter is it's just impossible for somebody to be thinking about you all day long while they walk around seeing a bunch of other people who have the exact same expectations and problems. Okay, so just know that. Uh, secondly, they just kind of almost to piggyback on that, they have quotas they got to hit. Um, they have uh, they have to be able to show that they have uh, their they're, they're demonstrating effective health care. And so much can get lost in that. I mean, look at the education system. Again, I'm not, I don't, I'm not a very politically active person. I, I like both sides. I want to, you know, kind of see what I'm dealing with on both and kind of make a decision for myself. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, but it, it's like teachers. I mean, yeah, there are some good measurements that, that there have to be some standards in place, but they're never going to be perfect. Okay. And things can get really chaotic and bastardized in the process depending on management and depending on who's in office and depending on just you know whether or not they woke up on the right side of the bed that day like it's not that simple but the point of it is you have to realize that they have certain numbers that they have to hit and it is very depending on again on a lot of things it can be extremely important that they hit them at least on paper so you know it's not an excuse to, for poor practice, but it is a reality. Um, and, and thirdly, and this is pretty big, they're, they're used to dealing with people who expect and perhaps demand a very quick fix. Again, with unrealistic expectations, I don't know what it's like to be a doctor, just like most doctors don't know what it's like to you know, run 350 servers, virtual machines, and make them all tick with our applications that they use all day. Um, so, but that said, like... It, not only do they expect a quick fix, patients, many of them, um, but they uh, they don't do what the doctor tells them. A lot of people don't. Just that, you know, some doctors might say, do this exercise. It's going to help with your back, whatever. And I'll get to that in a minute with some more specifics. But um, the people, they just don't work. Or somebody will be like, what? don't tell me to do that, man. Just give me a freaking pill. Like, give me a button to push. And... Sometimes medicine is the answer, um, but the point of it is people don't listen to the doctor. Plus, they got to worry about, especially down down here in, uh, on the fringes of Appalachia. Uh, I hate to say it, but we got people are they abuse the system. I mean, they want to get in, they want to get drugs, and you know that's a whole other thing. I, I feel for those people, but the doctors can't just give everybody drugs. Um, so even the ones that don't want to just medicate every single person. They're still dealing with people that they have, they have to be vigilant, all right? And, and, they, and, they, and they're probably just sick of getting beaten down by, you know, you might get one people in 100 that actually does what you tell them to do. So it's just like, we're dealing with this, we just got a big freaking problem here. We got problems with the patients, we got problems with the doctors, and we got to figure, we our problems with ourselves still exists. Our healthcare problem, our, our sorry, our health issue, our bum knee or whatever, it's still there, okay? So regardless of what's going on here, we still got to take care of this crap, which is kind of why I'm back up, back to it. You have to deal. You are responsible for it. You have to be the one that at least takes action here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of speak from the perspective of doctors. Like I, I talked about this before in a, a huge document I wrote, where I talk about dieting and people back and forth on dieting. I won't go down that, but my whole thing is diets are tools. All right, they're not fix-alls. They're not, you know, the only expectation you should have from a diet is that you can use it to gain, at the very, very least, you might get everything you want from it, you might, but at the very, very least, you gain knowledge. You gain the knowledge of either that it's not for you, or there is some parts of it that are for you, or it is for you, and there's some parts that are, but maybe some of them aren't, or 
you know, th that's all valuable. So doctors, your trip to the doctor, your healthcare network is a tool. All right. If we want to personalize, uh, we want to humanize doctors a little bit, which they are humans. I have several friends and family members who are doctors and I love them dearly. Um, they're guides. They are guides. Okay. Uh, Couple things we got a couple more things we got to point out. This a lot of this is going to be building to context and then a little bit, a couple action points. Again, this video is getting long. Appreciate you here with me. I got to get this out. I got to get this out of my head. Okay, this is how I do it. If no one else watches this. At least I'll feel better about. It. Um, you have. How do I phrase this? I wrote it down, but it's, uh, my, my, I wrote good good ones, bad ones, same people. All right, so <laughs> with a star next to it, <laughs> this, is, this is important. Uh, doctors, you, you don't need to assume that they're all the same, but you need to operate from that perspective, okay? So let me explain that. You may have a doctor, your physician, or the one you're seeing, the one who's in front of you at the time. He or she may be arrogant. They may be jerks with terrible bedside manner. Uh, they may be rude. They might come off as lazy. They may come off as ignorant, stupid. Maybe they're, they're just barely skating by on the continuing education requirements. Um, greedy. Uh, all those things can be rolled into one. I have met those types. Uh, whether or not they seem that way, that there are people like that, that that's their default. All right, I'm going to acknowledge that. That's for real. On the flip side, though, you have fantastic doctors, basically the exact opposite of all of those qualities. They are always up to, up to date with what they need to know. They care about their patients dearly. They, they, they love you. They really want to help you. They're going to go for every extra step that they need to take to give you the best possible health care they can provide. Okay. But then we have uh, life. Okay. We have good things that could happen to those bad doctors or just their moments where they shine. And we have terrible things. Maybe this great doctor of the year is having the worst day of his life. Okay. But he's still going to school to, to work because he's a freaking good doctor. And you're going to, it's just going to happen. That guy will have a bad day. And we don't know which one we're really going to get. Whether you trust your doctor and have good rapport with them, which is very important. It is. I'm not saying you shouldn't trust doctor. Please don't take that as what I'm saying. But my point is you can't count. You can't 100% count on anything. Okay. You, you, you just got to know that that bad, that great doctor might be having a bad day. That bad doctor might be having a good day. Whatever the case may be, they're, they're, this approach maintains consistency. It will work for either case. Okay. Um, you got to know that even the biggest, this is at least what I think, I could be wrong, but even the biggest jackass physicians, providers, um, I, I can't, shouldn't keep saying physicians, not everybody who's a provider is a physician, but I'll say providers. <laughs> even the best, oh, sorry, even the, uh, the biggest asses, <laughs> that's what I wrote, uh, who are providers, um, they still, they still have a tremendous wealth of information, whether or not they're sharing it with you or whether or not they really even know what's in there. All the schooling, all the training, all the res the residencies, maybe the um all the experience that they currently have in their in their in their independent craft or whatever it is they're doing, that's all in there somewhere. <laughs> they're not idiots. They're not actual idiots. They may appear to be, but even the stupidest, seemingly stupidest, biggest big headed provider still has a lot of information in there that you can get access to. Okay, let's just say, hypothetically, that I'm wrong and that some goon made a, happened to make his way through medical school and residency and uh, whatever else is he or she had been doing and, and, and they were maybe cheating or, you know, sleeping with somebody. They made it through and they're actually, they, it turns out they are actually stupid. They don't really know anything. Here's one thing, though. They most likely work in an institution or a network among somebody else who might have an idea of what's going on. Okay. So that's another thing we have to keep in mind. At the very least, they could be a liaison, whether or not they like it, to your answer, to your problem. Okay. So those are two things we need to keep in mind.
Number one, they're all pretty darn smart. But they might not want to share their information, but they have it. And number two, even if I'm wrong about number one, they work with somebody who knows. Okay? So, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, let's, uh, let's change our perspectives a little bit if you need to. Maybe you already have this and you just watch 20 minutes in because you're bored. <sighs> Thanks. Uh, instead of, instead of, <coughs> what's this doctor going to do for me today? We need to change our, we need to change it to something along the lines of, uh, how am I going to use this visit or how am I going to use this healthcare experience to fix my problem? Okay. You see the difference there? It's not, I wonder what spell he's going to get. I wonder if it's going to be abracadabra or alakazam for me today. This doctor and he better freaking do it or I'm going to be pissed off. Again, again, there are certainly malpractice cases. There are certainly problems where, where justice needs to be laid down. I'm not dismissing that. Not dismissing that. But for the most part, okay, you follow. Even in those cases, you still got to know what's going on so you can build a case for yourself, right? All right. Now got, maybe I'll need to make an attorney video too. Um, how, how to handle how to handle business to your lawyer. Um, but the, the second, you know, we the, the healthcare system is a tool for you. All right. It's something you have access to. Um, I'm not asking you to, to be your own doctor. I'm just asking you to use the tools at your disposal and take it, take, take accountability for it. Okay. And it is important because it's your healthcare. So how taking that a step further, how are you doing that? Well, I don't, I, you need to be, I, I'm of the opinion you need to be, you need to respect everyone, even jerks, whoever they, they, you need to So There's a point where you gotta, you kind of gotta, get a little bit direct, a little bit nasty, maybe. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to talk about that. But you, you, get, you do have to respect everybody. I think that's important. Um, and it makes things, makes people a little more willing to help you. You know, smile every now and then. That whole thing, all those cliches. They really do work. Uh, that said, you kind of got to, you, you got to acknowledge that you might have to, you might have to stretch them a little bit. Uh, you might even have to offend them. Okay. You got to be okay with that. Um, at the end of the day, they're doing their job. Their job is to help you and you're doing your job. Your job is to make sure that you're helped. Okay. That's, that's where we are here. Nothing wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, it might sound like pretty, pretty harsh, harsh terminology there, but I mean, who can really dispute that? Um, so I want you to decide that next time you go to the doctor and you have a visit, you're going to come away with something. Um, you're going to come away with something real and that something could be, it could be a, a referral to another physician. Like I said, you might have to offend them. Not like, well, you clearly don't freaking know what you're doing. So point me to someone who does, but you could say, Hey, I really like to get a second opinion on this. Thanks very much for that information. Um, I hear that you guys have a great physical therapy practice. I'd like to know you know, who can you come? There's different ways to sugarcoat things. You don't have to be a jerk just because you're asking, just because you're basically saying that they're idiots. Even if you feel that way, it doesn't have to come across that way. Um, okay, get, get, get something real. It could be a referral. Uh, it, it could be uh, a exercises. Exercise. Okay, well, my ba yeah, something that just happens. I'm going to talk. I'll give a specific example here, what I mean by that in a minute. It could be medications. Like uh, It could be surgery. Like As much as I hate just throwing medicine at stuff and throwing surgery at stuff, I'd be a fool to say there's not a time for that. There are medicines that do help you, okay? And not everything has to be a natural remedy. It's great if it is, but it, sometimes it's just not, okay? Take advantage of science. Um, and as far as surgery goes, the same, same thing. I don't, I hope I, I will, I will, I'll tell you right now, I will do, if, if a doctor tells me I need surgery for something, and I have actually had, they've just said, well, you might need surgery for this someday. You know, everybody's probably heard that. I will do everything in my power to avoid that. I will. But I also uh, know that it, it might happen. I might just have to, okay, maybe surgery is the best thing in this case. But I'm going to make freaking really, really, really as sure as I could possibly be that that is the best case. Or that is the, what needs to be done. Okay? So come away with something. Make it your goal to come away with something. Just a, 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 a piece of profound knowledge that you could work with. Okay. Something that you could work with or something tangible like medicine, referrals, exercises, something that you can work with to take the next step to fixing your problem. That is your goal. You have to go in with that mindset. You're getting something out of this visit. It, um, 
kind of to, 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 to boot, this is sort of arbitrary, but I would, I would vow to ask three questions in the visit. Ask three open-ended questions, okay? So instead of, um, isn't there something else I could do? Like, isn't there, isn't there another option? Uh, what other options are there? What else can I do? I'm what, listen, listen, I want to fix this problem. I, I don't like this. I don't like having this. Please tell me what else there is. I'm, I'm open to anything, even if it's crazy. If you think it's crazy, just please let me know. I want, I want to know. Okay. They'll tell you, they will tell you. And if they don't, that's when you ask for a referral. Okay. We have a plan. It's good. You're going to get something out of this, but ask three open-ended questions to dive deeper. If they, you know, it's going to come naturally. Once you ask that first question, the rest will probably likely follow. Even if they don't, you know, you can point to a diagram on the, <laughs> on the a poster on the wall. I'm like, hey, what's, what's that? Yeah. Oh, that's a, uh, it's a penis. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why. <laughs> learn something while you're there. Just even if it has nothing to do with your problem, even if all your problems are solved, you might as well learn something while you're there. Okay. So ask questions, ask open-ended questions. Um, that was stupid. <laughs> I feel like Chris Farley on that, uh, talking about Die Hard, Paul McCartney. You know what I'm talking about? If you don't, forget it. Okay, moving on. You guys, you guys got to get through this. Come on, quit fooling around, guys. <laughs> um, when they give you that something, now this is huge, this is huge. When they give you that thing, so we right now we have uh, decided you're going to come away with something real. You're going to get to that by most likely you're going to ask questions. You have to ask, you don't have to ask three, but ask, ask open ended questions. Okay. Not questions that they can say no to. Even if that is probably, even if that is the answer, you still ask open ended questions. All right. Dig, be a detective. Lastly, when they give you that something, when you get that something that you've asked for, um, you use it to attack your problem with everything that you have. It might not be the answer. It might not. That medicine might not work. That that exercise might do nothing for you whatsoever. But you're not going to know. That doctor, again, back to the, my, my one of my earlier points, he or she, they know some stuff. Or, may, or they at least know somebody who does and they heard it. Whatever. They're giving you something to work with. So if you're if you're if you're making going through all the trouble to get there and you're using their time and you're using your time and you've gotten something to work with, even if it's just a little piece of knowledge. Do what you can with that. Do as much of that as you can. And just know that even if it doesn't work, you're at least going to be able to go to your next doctor. Or you're at least going to be able to hop on Google or whatever it is you decide to do after this. You're at least going to be able to say, look, I tried this and I really did. I tried it. He did this, give me this exercise. I did it. He told me to do it every single day. I did it every single day. It did not work. They're going to say, okay, well, it's probably not a problem with whatever. Let's try this. Okay. It's not everything can be fixed immediately. And they're only going to know as if you, the only way going to know is if you try it. Okay, so use what they give you. I want to tell you just kind of two examples. I've had, I've lived a I've lived a wonderful life. I've never had any really serious medical problems. Um, I've had a lot a lot a lot of nagging problems. A lot of these little you know nickel and dime issues with my body, uh, with my mind. Um, yeah, and uh, just problems. Okay, and so while I'm not trying to say my problems are the worst, and you know I've never whatever. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to give you, give you an example. Maybe you don't get what I'm saying, but let me, you will. Uh, I've, I've gone to the doctor. These, these are two examples of where I kind of decided to adopt this sort of, this method, this practice. I went to, um, I told you about my back pain. In my scapular region. Sharp pain. So many docs told me, oh, you know, just take NSAIDs and, and don't do what hurts it. And take it easy. You know, and by the way, this is your life now. It's like that Louis C.K. bit, um, whatever. Uh, if you know what that is, <laughs> and you don't judge me for thinking he's funny, even though he's, you know, a creep, he's still funny. <laughs> okay, so um, I went to a doctor, and I actually went to a chiropractor. Again, say what you want about chiropractors; they're not all bad. Um, but anyways, I was at a chiropractor a few years ago, and he said. Uh, uh, I, I was telling him about my pain and he, he wanted to tell him it was something with my ribs twisting. It's always something about ribs twisting with chiropractors. <laughs> I'm generalizing. I'm doing exactly what I said I shouldn't do, but it, it, 
It seems to be the case. Everybody's got some sort of weird rib issue. Um, I'm ignorant. But I said, okay, oh, that's cool. Uh, what can I do about it? And he said, well, you can breathe differently. Like you can use more diaphragmic breaths. <sighs> hey guys, uh, I got cut off there. Um, I may have run out of space on my phone. We'll see what happens. Okay, so uh, he said breathe differently. And I saw, uh, first of all, he was right. He was correct. I think, I mean, I think that he's correct in that that would have helped me. Um, but at the time I was like, okay, breathe differently. It, it's stupid as well. Uh, what else? <laughs> well, this is how I was kind of fleshing it out. This is not the attitude you should have, but this is the attitude I had at the time as I discovered this, this method. And he said, okay, man, look, you, you, you should just start standing up, standing up when you work, get a standing desk. Now, this is at a time, this is at a time when standing desks were not quite popular, at least not in Ohio. And no one had even heard of a standing desk, or at least no one that I knew of. I certainly hadn't. I said, you want me to stand up? I'm like, I work in an office with a bunch of other people, and you want me to sit there and stand while I'm working? Like, you might as well have been, <laughs> you might as well have been recommending, like, breast reduction surgery for my back problem, for me. It was just not, I thought it was stupid. And I said, really, like, standing desk. And he, he's like, come here. So we walk back into his office, and he points to uh, his own standing desk. And I said, oh, so you actually do this? He's like, yeah, I don't sit. I mean, I sit sometimes you know, when, I, when I feel I need to, but yeah, I just stand most of the day. I don't have back problems and blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm not saying standing desk will fix all your back problems, but for me, I actually, okay, okay. I tried it. And I did not have that problem. I did not have that problem again. Like I still comes up every now and then, but guess what? When it does, it's usually because I spent the day like at the library or something, just hunched over and I, I'm not going to get into the details of that. But the point is I asked for something, even though I was being a smug jerk, I was asking for st stuff. He eventually gave me something I could work with and I did it and it worked. It again, it might not always work, but it worked for me. And it wouldn't have if I just said, oh, it was my ribs wiggling. Okay, like I'll be sure to, hey, calm down there, ribs. Like, like what, what, you know. Okay, second example. <laughs> I can't, I'm not supposed, no one's, no one is supposed to make 40 minute videos. This is, this is why. Last example and I'll leave you. Um, uh, I've had orthotics, custom orthotics, prescription art supports for years, since I was like 15. Sorry, I don't have dates here, but it was, again, maybe like three years ago. Um, I went to see my new, new podiatrist, and he was, you know, giving me, measuring me for, for, my, for my mold or my prescription art supports. And I said, um, which are like $300, by the way. You know, they're very expensive. And I said, hey... Uh, you know, I'm going to think these art supports, they're yeah, cool. We'll, we'll do these. I've always, always have. So I need, I need, I know I need some. I said, uh, are there, I get some pain in my ankles sometimes. I get like sharp pains in my ankles and they feel weak and, and my art, my arches hurt. I'm like, are there tools? I've, I've heard some things about like lacrosse balls and I heard there's like exercises you can do to help you out. Uh, and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, there's tons of stuff. He's like, here, let me show you this. This is what you do for ankle dorsiflexion. Uh, you could do these uh, ankle circles, you know, 30 times each direction every day to make your ABCs with your ankles. Um, the, yeah, use a lacrosse ball. He's like, he's like my wife loves lacrosse balls. Um, she uses them to, for the bottom of her arches. It could help with plantar fasciitis. And I said, well, how often can I do that? He's like, do it every day if you want. Um, still want those art supports? Yeah, of course I do because I, I didn't know. Um, I never really ended up even wearing the art supports because that day I went home and I did every freaking thing he told me to do. And I did it religiously. I made sure I did it every day. And I have not worn art supports since. I wore them I wore them for 15. Now, I'm not saying that I don't completely need them. I might just be a little stubborn. But I tell you, the same symptoms aren't there. My ankles are stronger than they've been since I was like six. Um, a lot of six-year-olds. That's, that's, that's one thing about six-year-olds. Huge, strong ankles. Um, but very healthy, and uh, at least compared to where I was. And it's just because I took this, you know, I took five extra seconds. I asked him a question. He gave me a 15-second or a two-minute answer. 
I took that away and I actually worked with that. I took action. It does, this is not how great I am and how great my ankles are. This is how great you can be and how you can fix your problem. If you, you properly use your, your, your physicians, your providers, your healthcare network, your hospital, your clinic as a guide. Use them as a tool. That's what they are. Okay, there are people you could be friends with them. I train doctors, I train doctors' wives and doctors' husbands. And so I, I think I don't know. I'm friends with all sorts of different doctory people, and um, I love them. And but uh, where, wherever I'm, I'm done. I'm done talking, guys. Guys, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> I'm just gonna end it now. Thanks for watching. If you have comments on this, um, I highly recommend it. Or sorry, if you have comments on this, please leave a, a, a comment. I also want to recommend the book Extreme Ownership, which has nothing to do with doctor's visits or healthcare at all, but it, it's by Jocko Willink, and it's um it's great. Just kind of changes your perspective of, of, of dealing with stuff. Um, it is sort of where I've kind of gotten a lot of these ideas, or at least been able to turn them into something I could spit out in 40 minutes, something clean like that, you know? Um, and then subscribe to my videos. I don't always make super stupidly long videos, but I do often. Um, you don't have to watch any of them, but you do need to hit that subscribe button. If you don't mind, that'd be really nice. Okay. Hit that. All right. Or that. Or that. Or that. Thanks, guys.